Alrighty, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first of the, uh, well, many bonus videos which are going to be included as a part of uh, this database uh, and SQL video tutorials course. Uh, it, the first bonus video was one that I wasn't planning for, but I had a question that came in um, regarding how to read sort of the documentation that comes on the MySQL website. And I, I completely understand why that question came in, because it's fairly difficult to really understand what the heck this stuff is talking about. So what I've done is I've gone to uh, the MySQL.com website. So if you want to follow along, you can, you can do so as well. So just go to MySQL.com, and then they'll they'll have somewhere, depending on, I'm sure this will look different in the future, um, but as it stands right now, they have a documentation tab, but you'll just look for some sort of a uh, documentation tab, or a, a section somewhere on the website that says something about documentation. So we go to the documentation, and then you can choose your version. Now, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to go to the latest um, sort of version uh, that is currently available. Although this is, sorry, this is for the development releases. I guess that's not really the greatest version. This is kind of like the alpha or the beta, uh, you know, version that's out right now. So I guess I'll go to the uh, general um, releases. So that'll be 5.6. And I want to look at the documentation for uh, the actual MySQL stuff, not the release notes. So I will choose 5.6 and I can choose between a bunch of things. I'm going to do, uh, let's see, I'll just do the HTML online, but you can also get a PDF. You can do an EPUB, which I believe is like um, uh, for your tablet. If you have a tablet machine like um, a Kindle reader or something along those lines uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to do the HTML online version. And let's see, so now they have a whole bunch of different topics to choose from, but I think the, the general um, issue that, that's happening that's, uh, that was brought up was with respect to the SQL syntax. Um, so I'm just going to go to the general section and go to the SQL syntax. Um, normally when you go and, and you look at the, these um, documents, usually you, you land on them via a, a, an actual search, a web search, like a Google search. Um, normally you don't land on them by going through them like this on the website. But again, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to show you how exactly you would drill through all this documentation um, if you ever had to. So, all right. There's two, uh, two big types of statements that we can look at, the DDLs and the DMLs. Uh, we talked about that earlier in, uh, oh gosh, I don't even remember what lesson it was. But uh, the data definition uh, languages for um, uh, scripts that will change uh, sort of the schema. So scripts like altering tables, um, adding new tables, uh, and so on and so forth. So stuff that will uh, modify the overall uh, database structure itself. And then we have the data manipulation statements, which are things like insert statements, uh, so the CRUD operations, create, read, update, and destroy, um, and so on and so forth. So there we go. We have, namely, those two are the ones that we're looking at in this course. So let me just go to the first one and click on it. So now we have a whole bunch of different, um, you know, sort of um, uh, executions, what, what he's called, statements, operations, that's the word I'm looking for, that you can go through. Um, so I'm just going to look for ones that are familiar to us. Uh, let's do alter table syntax, because that's one that we've looked at in the course. And you can click on that. So there's some uh, alter table uh, examples. So here's the the uh, the actual. I'm sure this is where the question came from. How the heck do you read this stuff? Because um, this is not very straightforward how to read this stuff. So the first thing that you need to know is that anything in the square brackets, um, at least this is how I see it, and I'm pretty sure this is how it works. Because um, I myself am not even an expert at reading this stuff, but this is just how I've read it in the last you know five ten years of my career um, as a programmer. So anything in square brackets like this is optional. So that, that means you do not have to include it in the statement in order for the statement to compile and run. Okay, anything that's not in um, sort of um, uh, brackets, and, and I believe anything that is, well, at least for uppercase in this, ma in this manner, um, it's required. So the alter statement and the table statement is required. And then it looks like this is sort of bolded a little. So I would assume also that anything that's bolded um, is also required if it's not in um, uh, these sort of square brackets. So this tells me that alter table and table name is uh, required. This in lowercase probably means that it is 
a placeholder for something else. It's kind of like a variable. Because obviously, TBL underscore name represents the table name, which could be anything you like. Whereas the uppercase alter table, those are the actual statements that are sort of immutable. Those are the statements that are reserved words inside of SQL. Okay, so I believe that's how it goes. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, uh, you know, perusing through here. I see other uppercase words like add, column, add, index, key, constraint. So all these things that are uppercase are keywords in um, MySQL itself. So anything that's uppercase um, is going to be required if, uh, if it's not inside of the uh, square brackets, okay? All right, so then we go further, and uh, sure enough, like I said, we have the lowercase stuff, which is kind of like a... Um, could be a, uh, a placeholder for another type of uh, name or whatever. Um, and then we get on to here. So there's more optional stuff. Alter specification, alter uh, specification again and again, and partition options. So, I mean, these are all, these are optional fields, and it looks like they could be um, some sort of uh, placeholders for other, other things. So I'm not exactly sure what they're referring to here. And if you're ever not sure of what they're referring to, I think you can probably highlight it and uh, and copy and search for it. So I'm going to hit Control F to search the page uh, for the alter specification. So I see it shows up here. And does it show up anywhere else in this document? Um, so it does give some sort of uh, explanations as to what this this uh, statement could mean. So that's typically what I do if I'm if I'm not exactly sure about uh, what it is that it means. Um, I'll just go through and sort of search for it on the page. Um, I believe the alter specification in this case it's really just talking about um, what it is that you're altering, right? So uh, or how how it is that you're going about altering the table in what fashion. So in this case, that shows up. We'll see if this kind of, um, uh, you know, wording shows up in another ones. I've never seen this alter specification before, or rather never even paid attention to it. So all we know now is we would have to type in alter table table name. And then the next uppercase thing that's not inside of uh, square brackets is here, add. So add column, column name, column definition. So, um... Okay, so you get an idea of what it is that uh, that you need to do. Apparently, the term column is not required. So you can just say add and then type in a column name, and I believe uh, it might understand that as meaning um, add a column. Okay, it might default to that. Um, and then uh, we have our column name, which is, like I said, uh, it can be a placeholder for anything you like. And the column definition is like the, um, the actual um, variable type that you're going to be giving to it, the actual data type, right? And then some more optional things uh, that are listed here. So then you can actually just keep on going with other things. You can say add another column. You can say add an index or add a key. You can say, and I believe this bar here means or. That's typically the um, the meaning of it inside of programming. So you this is kind of like, or you can do this, or you can do that, or you can do this, or you can do that. Um, so I believe that's what that stands for, Okay. And then you can scroll down and sort of just apply all that logic to um, exactly how you'd read all this stuff. So, I mean, what MySQL is doing here is showing you absolutely every single possible command that you can put in tandem with an alter table command. Okay, this is every single possible uh, scenario that you could possibly hit. Okay, um, and uh, and when when they they do it like that to be complete. So for the so sake of completion, but obviously when you're looking at this and not realizing what's going on, um, it looks very overwhelming. So obviously I realized why that question came in. It is very overwhelming when you look at this stuff. But just know that this is every possible conceivable uh, different um, types of commands that you can put in tandem with an alter table command. So what I what my suggestion to you would be is to go and, and, and read up or watch the videos that you have already uh, you already have access to with respect to learning things like the alter table command and uh, and understanding that sort of basic syntax and then if ever the the need arises where you need to come back and say okay I need to alter the table but I don't know um, I need to alter something else about the table that I haven't learned about then you can go into here and sort of search around for that uh, particular functionality so like I you know if you wanted to alter a constraint and maybe I didn't teach how to alter a constraint um, you can maybe do a search on the page and look for constraint and sure enough you can see uh, add constraint um, and is that it so apparently with an alter table all you can do is add a constraint 
Okay, and then you can go on and, and maybe perhaps look ab um, more about uh, the actual constraints themselves. So maybe you, t you uh, search a page for constraint and you scroll down and maybe there's some talk about it. So here you go. Here's some uh, talk about constraints and how you can go about uh, adding them or some maybe some rules around adding them and so on and so forth that you can read out through the page. Okay, and at the very bottom of the page, you'll notice there's user comments. So these are people <clears throat> who have used MySQL who are sort of throwing in their two cents about this particular document. Okay, and sometimes there is some valuable information that it that is contained inside of the user comments. So I would not just I would not skip the user comments if you're trying to learn something um, specific because maybe something's happening you don't understand why. Um, there might be some good uh, explanations inside of the user comments regarding whatever it is that you're looking up. Okay, so that's sort of an overview for the altered table syntax. If we go back, uh, let me go to, uh, let's see, um, let's do, actually, let's go back and do a DML. So let's go to data manipulation and let's look at something like uh, an update syntax. Okay, so here you can see this is a lot simpler. There's a lot less things that can that can go on with an update statement. Um, so I guess maybe that was a bad example. The first one I chose that was very overwhelming with stuff. Um, but here you can see we have update in capitals. So that is mandatory to type in. And then in uh, square brackets, we have a low priority. So that's uh, not mandatory, that's optional, as well as ignore is optional. And then we have sort of our, our placeholder for um, whatever it is that we're going to be subbing in there. So table reference. And then set is uppercase, so that's required. And then, you know, column name one, that's bolded, so that's um, a placeholder for something else. And so on and so forth. We have, um, then we have, well, this is an interesting syntax. Let me think about this now. We have an open uh, curly bracket with expression one comma def or the or symbol and then default so is there any sort of talk about default on this page <clears throat> so we can see here it says uh, each value can be given an expression or the keyword default to set a column explicitly to its default value so if you wanted to set a column to explicitly to its default value um, you could just type in default instead of actually typing in the expression. That's how I read it anyway. So it looks like with these curly curly braces, it means one or the other. So you can you can sub in either one of these things after the equal sign for the column name. Okay, and that's actually something I didn't even realize. I didn't know that you could do that, that you could set a column name equal to its default just by putting in the, uh, the word default. So that's kind of cool. And then you see here, as an option, you can keep on going and adding more columns with the exact same syntax, column name two, with whatever other expression or default you want to set it to. Um, and then dot, dot, dot means you can keep on going, repeat this syntax here, right? Which means you can keep on adding more and more columns onto the after the set. Uh, field okay and then again if you want to you can put a where condition if you want to you can do an order by and if you want to you can do a limit okay and this is interesting as well I didn't realize before this that you can actually order an update statement so I was curious I said well, how can you order an update statement what the heck does that mean so I looked at order and um, and it says if the order by clause is specified the rows are updated in the order that is specified and the limit clause places a limit on the number of rows that can be updated so not only can you limit the number of rows that are updated if that's something that you want to do you can actually order by some you know, column and, and have it limited by that ordered um, uh, updated column field that you specify in the order by statement. So that's pretty cool too. I mean, there's lots of stuff. There's lots of sort of um, additional functionality that you can, th that's at your fingertips that you probably didn't realize, um, just like I didn't realize as well. Everything that it, it's going to be available for you inside of this documentation. So hopefully that is a good explanation on how to go through the documentation and sort of you know be able to parse through and understand it. If you go to the insert syntax, you can see um, there's a bunch of that's actually three different types of, of ways to to do an insert, right? So I have or and or here. So I you know who knows what the heck the differences here um, are. If I were to look. Um, I'm not sure I can see a difference just yet off the top of my head uh, into partition set. Okay, so this one has something else here uh, with a column name and then there's the set, whereas this one, um, this one doesn't have the column name after the partition uh, on duplicate, on duplicate, da da da. 
and this one does have the column, but then this one has a select as opposed to a set. Um, so that's, that makes sense. You, we've learned about the insert into with a select statement combination. We've learned about the insert with the values. And then this one is um, just an insert with a, a set without the values, I guess, is what they're doing. So there's the three different ways to insert into um, a table. And I mean, the same rules apply here. The uppercase is mandatory. Um, inside of the square brackets is optional. Um, they use the or syntax to say it's this keyword or this keyword or this keyword um, into table name. Apparently the word into is um, uh, optional as well. I didn't even know that. I thought you always had to put insert into, but I guess you can say insert table name and um, you can specify a partition, uh, column names, values, etc., etc. So, and again, if you are at all um, curious about what one of these things means, you can copy, uh, do a search and, and paste it in, and we can look at um, what partitions are, for example. Okay, so the partition option takes a comma separated list of the names of one or more partitions or subpartitions or both of the table. So I didn't talk about partitions because I've never had to partition a table myself um, in my programming career when it comes to SQL. Uh, but if you wanted to, I guess, see more about that, they have C section 19.5 on partition selection. Um, and I'm sure you can click on that and start to learn more about partitions and how it works. Okay, so there you go. That's how you sort of go through, parse through the actual documentation itself. Um, hopefully that's a good, uh, a good overview on how to do that. If you see some syntax that you're just not sure about, you can always go to the um, support tab inside of this, uh, this actual course itself and shoot off a question and I will gladly answer it for you. All right, so hopefully that was a good overview of uh, all of this documentation, confusing stuff, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next bonus video for the course. Bye for now.